One of the things that I said in my first video a couple of months ago is that I'd use this channel in order to voice grievances with Zelda or the Zelda community when needed. And this is one such occasion in which I'm going to be exercising that self-proclaimed right. Although I might be new to making Zelda videos, I'm certainly no spring chicken when it comes to being a part of the Zelda community. Regardless, I don't think, you know, there is no one voice for the Zelda community. I don't believe that I am some sort of moral arbiter for Zelda content on YouTube. I've simply identified a problem and I'd like to explain it to you guys and explain my stance on it. It's as simple as that. So, there's been a problem underlying the community as a whole over the last, I don't know, decade or so at this point. And this problem is with the community, not the games themselves. And when I say community, more specifically, I mean creators, not you guys at home, the audience. Now I wanna be as specific as possible so that no one gets needlessly caught in any crossfire. There are three main bodies within the Zelda YouTube community, and these are practitioners, theorists, and artists. You know, those that play the games, those that talk about the games, and artists, musicians, cosplayers, etc. This video is not addressing the gamers or the artists. You know, my sights are set solely on what I believe to be my own area of Zelda YouTube. I won't beat about the bush, I'm just going to come right out and state the issue, and then I'm going to explain my stance. Uh, and I'm, you know, because there's a lot of nuance to it, there's a lot that I need to explain. And also, I want to explain, you know, why I feel it's best airing this out rather than letting it go unchecked. So, here goes. There's an enormous lack of creativity when it comes to Zelda content on YouTube. There's a saturation of creators who are all doing the exact same thing in the exact same ways and it's holding the Zelda community back. There it is. Now saying this and making this video might harm some of my diplomatic connections, but understand that this isn't coming from a place of vitriol or, or, or malice. <laughs> See what I did there? It's coming from a place of wanting more from the community. You know, if this video can light a fire under some of the uh, Zelda creators out there, then great. Job done. Also, I am most certainly not a gossip channel. That's what my second channel's for. Triforce Keemstar, go subscribe. I'm just messing, but for those of you who are looking for me to spill some tea, I've got a steady hand. After I posted my first video, another Zelda YouTuber came to me and said, oh, you know, I, I like the idea of, um, you know, a face cam Zelda channel. That's a, you know, that's a pretty cool idea. And I, I chuckled the first time I saw the message because I was like, I mean, I mean, it's not really my idea. Facecam has been a thing on YouTube for over a decade now. I mean, gamers, vloggers, whatever. It's a very normal thing. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a YouTube standard. But it got me thinking, and with the exception of, you know, the odd trailer reaction, Zelda YouTube is, for the most part, largely faceless. One of the things that makes YouTube so successful is its ability to connect people with other people. And one of the fundamental ways you as a human connect with another person is through a face. If I ask you to, you know, think about your best friend or a relative, like, you're not thinking about their toenails. You don't imagine their forearms or even the way they sound, necessarily. You picture their face. Now, some of you might say, ah, you know, but th th there's no need for me to be in my videos. The content doesn't call for it. And sure, there's nothing compelling you to be in your own videos, but one of the main things that keeps people coming back to your channel is you, dipshit. I mean, yes, there's the overarching theme, there's the common bond which is Zelda, but there's Zelda without your channel. There is no your channel without you. People clearly like what you've got to offer. They like to hear your thoughts and opinions on things, and they ultimately like you. So if your content doesn't call for it, guess who's making your content? You! Try switching it up! We are decades behind the rest of YouTube at this point. We're still stuck in, like, the forums. We have got a lot of catching up to do. Is there a correlation between Zelda content creators and crippling social anxiety? Yeah, sure, there's definitely a, a decent case to be made there. And, you know, YouTube has given voices to a lot of people that otherwise probably wouldn't have been heard, which is fantastic. But, to put it bluntly, the socially awkward have fostered an environment that itself is socially awkward. I mean, Zelda Tube won't even show you its face. And as a result, we're failing to connect with a lot of Zelda fans and doing the whole community a bit of a disservice. Now, I'm not saying if you make Zelda content, you have to show your face. You're not a Zelda tuber unless you show your face. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm simply pointing out a good place to begin if you want to start making content that isn't as samey or derivative. Like, you are an individual with individualities. Take advantage of them. Now, you might say, Johnny, all the top Zelda channels are faceless. So, you know, they're clearly doing something right. And unfortunately, it's this kind of thinking that has led the Zelda community to, to stagnate somewhat. Zeltic is faceless, obviously, bar a couple of reactions here and there. Monster Mace is faceless. 
Nintendo Black Crisis, Bandit, even my good friend Hyrule Gamer. But these guys are the top 1%. These guys are the trailblazers. You can use that formula all you like, but you'll always just be chasing something that's already been done. It's your job as a creator and your responsibility to the Zelda fans to take what you've learned from them and push things forward. You know, to iterate upon that, not to imitate it. The more abundant and the more accessible a commodity becomes, what typically happens to the intrinsic value of that commodity? The value decreases, of course. Like, the Zelda community on YouTube are very careful and very wise not to plagiarize one another's theories. The same can't be said for the way they structure videos, formatting, presentation, even thumbnails. Let's play a quick game of Spot the Thumbnail. I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of thumbnails from various different Zelda videos, and your job is to point out which one is the Zeltic thumbnail. Boom! That's right, they all belong to Zeltic, because of course I'm not here to call out any one person, but you probably had some other creators in mind. I'm just saying. Zeltic is widely regarded as the top Zelda YouTuber, and rightly so. The guy makes fantastic videos and has done for a very long time. I am genuinely a very big fan of his work. Zeltic has, what, six, seven hundred thousand subs? You know, the top guy is still under a million subs. Now, that's not a diss, obviously, I have, I have far less than that. And I'm not trying to make a point that, you know, numbers are important. But I've heard a lot of people say, oh, but you know, Zelda's a niche thing. <laughs> I hate to be the one to break it to you, but no. No, it's not. Like... 30 million people played the last game, and even more are gonna play Tears of the Kingdom. We left niche behind a long time ago. You know, back in 2007 on the forums, yeah, sure, that, that was a little bit niche. But with tens of millions of players and tens of millions of watchers watching that game, we, the creators, can be doing so much more to reach out to those people, to try and connect with those people who might not even know that this community exists. If you're feeling irked by this video, or if, you, you know, if you've taken something personally, good. That means you're self-aware enough to see what it is that I'm talking about and what's going on. If the amount of Zelda creators keeps increasing and all of these creators continue to do the exact same thing as everyone else around them, audiences are slowly going to start losing interest in Zelda Tube as a whole. Either that or it's going to become very top heavy. Like, why bother searching out smaller channels when you can just get the exact same content from the top dogs? The incentive to then become a new Zelda YouTuber then plummets because there's no audience there and then slowly the community deteriorates as a whole. I mean, sure, I'm talking in extremes here, but you know, what might seem like a very insignificant issue now could possibly domino into a very big and very real issue later on. I think that a lot of people in the Zelda community are becoming more and more aware of this deficit in creativity, particularly the bigger Zelda creators, because more often than not, it's their ideas and formats that are being derived. But, uh, you know, they often can't or won't say anything about it because, you know, it would seem out of character for them or, you know, it might seem like they're punching down. So take it from one of the smallest Zelda content creators. If you want to help the Zelda community as a whole, Zelda creators and fans around you, stop being so derivative. When you make something new, everyone benefits from that. Audiences have a new way of consuming Zelda content. Other creators can take inspiration from what you've made and the whole community as a whole flourishes. But when you just imitate the last guy, it only breeds negativity because you know, you've got to work really hard just to stand out. You'll just end up watering down the community as a whole. And ultimately you're of no inspiration to anyone. If you think that this is me attacking other Zelda creators for the videos that they make, that's not the case. Like I've mentioned, I'm not here to name names. I'm here to try and light a fire under creators to get them a, a bit more inspired. You know, my channel's not monetized. I don't stand to benefit from this financially. You know, this isn't for clout. You know, if anything, this will put me in the crosshairs of, you know, a lot of other creators. I, I, you know, I'm putting this out there because I feel like this community has got a lot more to offer and it's more than capable of giving it. And to you guys at home, the audience, demand more from your creators. If you're okay watching the same thing again and again and again, that's fine. If it makes you happy, that's all that matters. But to those guys who want to see Zelda YouTubers continue to push the envelope, to continue redefining the way you guys look at the world of Zelda, make it known. There are so many unbelievably talented Zelda YouTubers out there that are more than willing to make creative risks in order to bring you better videos, to bring you new videos, but might be hesitant to do so. So let them know in their comment sections. Whenever you see a Zelda YouTuber trying something new or experimenting, 
support that, encourage it, reward it, and we'll all be better off for it. Thank you for watching this video, and remember, Zelda good.